so that we can use it for uh, other events down the road. I would request those of you who have uh, your phone uh, on uh, voice, please silent them. And uh, all questions can be sent to us via chat. Uh, welcome all, have fun, enjoy this meeting for the first ever Rotary Club of Troy virtual meeting. With that, I'm going to turn it over to back to our president, Linda. Guest, uh, now I actually can see my picture and can uh, see what the view uh, looks like at this point. Uh, if you're a guest, uh, could you wave or some other uh, way? Let us know that you're here. I see a T.R. Shaw. Uh, wave, uh, Mr. Shaw, please. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he heard that. Uh, I believe he's a guest. I <clears throat> don't know if yeah, there's yeah. other guests. Uh, you uh, have uh, Rick Merrill from 6330 Coldwater, Michigan. Welcome. My buddy, my brother. I saw a Steve Ab Abels, I think. Uh, and you have Michael my... Henstra from the Rotary Club of, I think, Maidenhead, if I'm not mistaken. Can you raise your hand, Michael? And we I, have Jim I, Adams, I, our own Ryla leader. I, I saw Jim. Uh, I saw Jim Gilmore, a past district governor and president of Livingston Sunrise. Any others? And uh, if you're not being recognized, please just send us a chat and we will recognize you. Okay? Go ahead, Madam President. Th thank you very much. Uh, did you explain about the chat uh, in the bottom of your um, uh, Zoom uh, yes, screen? Yes, we did. Okay, very, very good. Okay, um, Mary Ann, are you ready for birthdays and anniversaries? Is Mary Ann here? Okay, I have the birthdays and anniversaries. Uh, have it. Okay, go ahead, Mary Ann. I'm able to do it. So, good Excellent. morning, everyone. We have a bunch of birthdays. Um, Jacob Knotts turned 25, and we have Jim Traharn had a birthday on the 23rd. Fuzia and Claire are both having birthdays on the 31st. And as far as spouse birthdays, Andy Satterfield had a birthday on the 14th of March. Maha Abu Hamdan on the 27th of March will have a birthday. And Don and Ann Rydell will have celebrated 24 years together on the 16th of March. The Rotary anniversary for Diana McKay was March 13th. So I think that has us all caught up, Linda. Thank you very much, Mary Ann. Mary Ann is our assistant secretary and in charge of writing thank yous, uh, doing birthdays, and in general, keeping us together and helping out our secretary and our note taking systems. Uh, the next thing that is important to consider today is the coronavirus postponement months, cancels, changes, and so on. We, I will be sending an announcement this afternoon that uh, gives you everything that I'm saying right now, plus anything else that I'm hearing. Uh, that means you don't have to take notes from the screen because there's quite a lot of this. Okay, uh, first cancellation you've already heard about, Lucky Luau unfortunately was postponed right before the event. Uh, Petra Zellos has been extremely helpful in uh, promising that we can reschedule within six months or even further out if we have to. Uh, all of the previously purchased event and raffle tickets will be honored at the reschedule event. The other thing that happened that you'll hear about in just a couple minutes is that the food that was already being prepared was taken to a, a homeless uh, shelter in Detroit. It was taken by Dave Donnellan, 
and uh, those people were delighted to have the food that we were not able to use. Face-to-face uh, -face meetings are canceled all the way through uh, April 15th. Uh, we are working to reschedule into virtual meetings. Uh, April 1st is already scheduled. You'll be finding that out by announcements and by going to troyrotary.net. That's where we post as much as we can of things that are happening. Uh, you know about other cancellations in the district, district assembly, RILA, district conference, Rotary International. I won't spend a lot of time on that. Uh, Roger Webster's 50 uh, years in Rotary celebration uh, was postponed. We will definitely have at least a picnic uh, this summer. Uh, finally, service uh, opportunities. I think it's important for us to think about the fact that Troy Rotary is people of action. We still do a lot of service. We still hear about things we can serve. Be safe. Don't go out of your house if you don't want to. Don't go out of your house if you don't need to. But if you want to serve, there certainly are people that would love to have things delivered to their porch or love to just have a friendly call. Uh, Hope Warming Center receives meals dropped on their porch and served by their staff by Anna, Guy, and Michael. We have a donation to completely cover of that meal uh, that was received by the Troy Rotary Foundations. Blessings in the Backpack has already distributed all food for March, and we're working to increase the quantity of food available to each child. We're almost ready to uh, do that for families. We have a teacher in the Troy schools that's willing to help us with that also. Uh, a suggestion from our district governor, call five people every day. Rotarians, family members, friends, anybody that you can call and simply say, how are you doing? It will brighten their day. It will brighten your day. You might find someone that needs help. Okay, and then finally, see if you can share information uh, about any needs you have because some Rotarians are saying, I'm available. Uh, for help, and uh, I'm available to help. Let's be sure and uh, share as much of that information as we possibly can. Okay, I will send all of these announcements out by email uh, because I know that you never will remember all of it, and you'll simply pick out those things that you're interested in uh, working on. Okay, uh, I think we're moving quickly. I think we're staying on time. Uh, I believe we're ready for Anna Albers to introduce our special guest today, though not someone unknown to us. Anna, are you ready for the introduction? Yes, I am, Linda. Hello, everyone. I hope all, everyone is well. Um, our speaker today obviously needs no introduction. We know her, our own Renee Partitis, was a Rotary Exchange exchange student once in South Africa. She began her career in culinary arts and nutrition and started a catering company at age 19. Renee also has a degree in interior design and has worked with playground safety surfacing. She now travels with her life and business partner, professional speaker, Michael Angelo Caruso. Renee enjoys bicycling and hiking. Her passions also include nutrition and creating delicious, healthy meals. Renee gives back to the community through Rotary and has served as president of this club. Today, Renee is here to show us how with a strong and healthy body, we can achieve things in our everyday lives that we never thought possible. It is my pleasure to introduce to you, Renee Petitis. Thank you. There. All right. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. I wanna thank so many of you for being here today as I'm looking through the list of our participants. Um, I'm delighted that so many of you are interested in the topic of building your immune system especially with everything that is going on in the world today. 
and these unprecedented times that we're currently, um, I don't even want to say existing in, but we're just trying to get through day by day, hour by hour. So thank you for being here today. Um, as was mentioned earlier, we do have a chat feature in the Zoom program. And if you mouse over the bottom of your screen, you'll see that one of the boxes down there is chat. I'm gonna ask everybody if you can just hold your questions till the end, because we may have a lot of questions. And I'll scroll through the feed at the end and do my best to answer whatever I can in that time frame. So again, thank you for being here. I came across a very interesting quote that I wanted to share with you um, by Rahm Emanuel. Never let a serious crisis go to waste. And what I mean by that is it's an opportunity to do things you think you could not have done before. And it's very appropriate at this period in time, especially when we're looking at how much our focus is on whether or not we have COVID 19? Uh, do we know somebody who has it? And I want to invite you to shift that focus from the stress around whether or not we have it, if you know somebody, what you can and can't do. And let's focus on something that you can do that empowers you, not just now while this crisis is going on, but that can serve you in the future. And that's your immunity and a way to build your immunity now and for the rest of your life. As Anna said, I, my name is Renee Pathetis. I am a behavioral nutrition coach and I help people in four main areas. Um, and they're what I call the four pillars of sustainable health. And that is with sleep, exercise, movement, and mindset. Today, we're gonna focus on just two of those areas that you can take immediate action in that will begin to improve your immune system more than you ever thought possible. I am gonna be working from my notes because I wanna make sure that I stay on track here and give you as much information as possible. If you have a pen and paper, I'm gonna suggest you jot down some notes um, because that may bring up some questions for you later on during the talk that I can help you with. So viruses are everywhere. Why is it that only some people get sick? It turns out that many people, whether it's due to genetics, toxins, stress, virulence of the viruses that are going around, as well as other factors, have holes in their immune system. And that makes you more vulnerable to bugs. The fact that this new virus has no cure, at least that we know of right now, tends to leave us disempowered with regard to our own health. And that doesn't need to be the case. That's why it's really, really important to look at things that you can do to support your immune system for now and for the future. So one of the most important things that you can do is develop a strong baseline. The number one component of developing a strong baseline is getting adequate sleep. And what I mean by sleep is not laying in bed for four hours or five hours watching TV and eventually dozing off. I mean actual genuine rest where your body gets into all the stages of sleep so that it can actually recuperate and regenerate. Sleep is the backbone of a robust immune system. You've probably noticed when you've been unwell in the past, one of the things you tend to do is sleep a lot. That is your body shutting down non-essential functions so that it can do what it needs to do, which is rebuild, redevelop. Every single process in your body is impacted by a lack of sleep. Everything, every organ function in your body is impacted by a lack of sleep depression, weight loss, weight gain, your complexion, your organ function, your digestion, your body's ability to eliminate the ATP cycle of regeneration, concentration, comprehension, everything in your body is impacted by sleep. We are not beings that have evolved at this point 
in uh, our evolutionary uh, process to bank sleep. You cannot deprive yourself of sleep and then think I'm gonna catch up on the weekend. It doesn't work that way. Sleep deprivation is a cumulative process on the body that damages you in ways you may not be cognizant of because you're not thinking properly. The average person needs 7.2 to nine hours of sleep a night, and that's under regular circumstances. That's getting restful sleep under regular circumstances. Can I ask anybody who's got their microphone on to mute it, please? Thank you so much. So what you might not realize is that by just missing one hour sleep a night, your body needs two to four hours to recover from that one hour of missed sleep. We are beings that require sleep, period. You cannot just say, I'm gonna catch up. It doesn't work that way. Now, I also wanna clarify that that's very different than if you're somebody, say like people who are in the military, who are trained in a very methodical, consistent way to work under pressure to do cognitive tasks with a lack of sleep. So people who are Navy SEALs, for example, and Rangers, they go through very, very, very specific training where they deprive them of sleep slowly and increase things that they have to do from a performance standpoint. That's something that you train up to and that you cannot sustain for your entire life. It's designed to be used in periods of stress. Does that make sense? It's interesting that we never chastise babies for needing sleep. I mean, we know that a baby, one of the most important things a baby needs is a lot of rest, right? Because that's how they grow. They come out, they eat, they poop, and they sleep by and large. And they've got some interaction with you. But what a baby needs to grow and develop is sleep. That's how their brain and their body starts to develop. As teenagers, we often chide our kids that they're sleeping too much and maybe that they're lazy. And it's very important that kids, especially kids going through puberty, their bodies are going through so many changes and so many adaptations. They need more sleep. They may need 14, 15 hours of sleep. It's just different. It doesn't mean that they're lazy. It's possible they're lazy, but by and large, it means their bodies are going through changes and they really need sleep. During these times, I want to encourage all of you to really focus on things that you can do. And I've got a list here I'm going to share with you of some things that you can do to help improve the quality of your sleep. And right now is the perfect time. We're quarantined until when? I think uh, the 13th of April right now. So we've got about three weeks ahead of us. Author Charles Duhigg, who wrote The Power of Habit, says on average, it takes people 17 to 21 days to instill a new habit. And that is because habits become hardwired in our brain. And the reason they become hardwired is because it's our body's efficiency, not wasting time or expending energy on things it doesn't need to. And I'm going to give you a really good example of that. You probably, more times than you can even remember, You'll back out of your driveway, and before you know it, you're at the grocery store, or you're at work, or you're at the gym, or you're at some place that you go regularly, and you don't even need to think about it. You know that you stopped and did all the things, and your foot hit the, hit the brake, it hit the gas, it stopped at the stoplights, it made the right turn, it made the left turn, but suddenly you, you arrive, and you're there, and you're like, wow, how, how did I get here? And that's because there's a program that's hardwired in there. It's a habit that has now got a groove basically in your brain. And because your body knows what is coming next, it's 817, I get in my car, I head to work and I arrive at approximately this time. It knows what it needs to do. So it kind of goes on autopilot. And that's one of the reasons habits are so hard to break. But right now we have a time frame in front of us and quite frankly, no excuses. We, a lot of us have time right now to do the things that we often complain we don't have the time to do in our lives, which is time. 
to make changes, to sleep, to spend time with our loved ones, to do a puzzle, to read a book, uh, something that we've been putting off because we just don't have time to do it. So let's use this time in front of us as a way to empower ourselves, build our immune systems. And here's a few things you can do to improve the quality of your sleep. Number one, make a plan. Make up your mind that you're gonna use this time to improve the quality of your sleep. If you're used to only getting six hours of sleep a night, don't say, okay, well, I've gotta stay in bed for eight hours. Try to get six and a half. And there are things that you can do with regard to that plan to make sleep easier for your body to get into. One of them is you need to turn off your devices. Your devices, including your television set, emit a thing called blue light. And you've probably heard a lot of this in news in the last couple of years. What the blue light does is it stimulates our pineal gland. And that is the gland in our brain that releases melatonin. Melatonin is a natural part of our circadian rhythm, which as the sun starts to get lower, more and more melatonin gets released into our system so that we can start to get sleepy. That's what's supposed to happen. And the things that interfere with that are our phones. It's the light emissions from our phones, from our um, iPads, from our television sets. So making sure that you have something, if you need to do work on a device, make sure that it's in night mode. If you're on a Mac computer, I use a program called Flux, which starts to dim my screen at 5 p.m. in the evening. And I change that for summertime to about seven, but it actually starts to cut out the blue light so that I'm not stopping the melatonin production, which is preparing my body for bed. Another thing that I have are blue blockers. These are easy to purchase on Amazon. There are specific glasses that block blue spectrum light. And we watch TV with these at nighttime. So after dinner, if we're going to put something on, we have our blue blockers on. Anytime after 6 p.m., we have our blue blockers on so that it's not stopping the production of melatonin and keeping us awake. Now, I have found that during the last week with everything that's been going on, I've been playing with this again to see, wow, does this really happen? Do I just believe it happens? Um, have I gotten so used to this that this has become a habit that it does or doesn't work? And I can tell you the last three nights, I have not worn these the way I normally wear them when we're watching a show in the evening. And I've been staying up later each night. It's just my mind is not shutting down. Everything is active. And when I go to bed, I'm not rest. I'm, I don't feel like I'm ready to go to bed. I'm feeling kind of like I'm awake, like I could do something else. So I encourage you to take a look on Amazon. They are delivered to your door. And think about something like blue blockers that can cut the light. Cooling your home, very important. The body sleeps better at cooler temperatures. Even if you're somebody who tends to run cold, Cooler temperatures help your body sleep better. And what's really important to tie in with that is you shouldn't have a heavy meal two to three hours before going to bed. Because if you do, your body is spending its energy, it's hot, because your body is trying to digest food, which warms up your system, right? So two to three hours before bedtime, don't eat. If you're gonna have a snack, make sure it's a very light snack and it's something that doesn't stimulate blood sugar, right? Something that's very, very light that you're not gonna have a lot of time digesting because that will keep your body awake and it also keeps it from going into what it needs to do, which is deep, restful, restorative sleep. Um, blackout curtains. If you don't have blackout curtains and there's a lot of light in your room, you'll have a very difficult time sleeping. Our eyelids are thin for a reason. It's so that they can detect light. It's how we used to wake up in the morning and it's how we fall asleep at night. If you don't have blackout curtains, get a sleep mask. I used to think that this was just one of the silliest, most princess-like things was to have my sleep mask, but once you get used to it, you'd be amazed 
at how much more soundly you will sleep because you're not rolling over in that little green light that emits from the smoke detector will wake you up in the middle of the night because it's supposed to, right? Those are, our eyes are meant to detect these sorts of things. So get a sleep mask. It's something that's very, very helpful. If you snore, get it checked out. Right now that might be a little bit challenging, but if you're somebody who has chronic snoring issues, get it checked out. You may have a level of sleep apnea that is correctable that is very, very damaging to sleep because you cannot get into all the stages of sleep. There's a phenomenal doctor. His name is Dr. Matthew Walker, one of the doctors in the field who's been doing extensive research and studies, clinical studies into sleep and the different effects on the different stages of sleep and brain patterns and cognition and everything. And it is phenomenal what they've discovered with regard to the stages of sleep. More and more, every stage of sleep is imperative. You cannot survive without getting into each and every stage of sleep. While they may be in different um, uh, ratios, every single stage of sleep has a very specific purpose in terms of our brain function, as well as our body's restorative processes. Another thing about sleep is that sleep is a really good stress management tool. It's a way for us to shut things down. When you're getting ready to go to bed at night, um, especially right now with everything that's going on in the world, I implore you, do not watch just the news. Do not look at all the feeds of everything that's happening now or how many deaths or how many this. Read something that helps free your mind, that relaxes you, whether it's poetry or a food book or it, it, whatever it is that relaxes you, that allows the mind to just kind of wander and calm down and relax. Do that prior to bed versus filling your mind with all these sorts of things that are creating anxiety and stress because it doesn't go away when you sleep. The last thing that you really put in is mostly, most likely what you're gonna be gnawing on all night long. Um, number two, and we will come back. I see that there's some other questions here coming up. So we will come back to that um, with regards to some sleep questions. Number two, eat foods that nourish. Good nutrition leads to good health, period, end of subject. There is no way around this. Food is your medicine chest. Now, one of the comments I get most often is it's expensive to eat healthy. Eat the best quality foods you can afford. You do not need to buy everything organic. You do not need to buy everything grass-fed, grass-finished. Look for the best quality food you can afford. For example, if you're going to buy uh, grass-fed, grass-finished beef, which is the only beef we purchase for us because of its nutritional availability to our systems, its nutritional profile, instead of buying bagged lettuce, which costs more, buy a head of romaine that you gotta wash and chop yourself right? There's a lot of ways to make choices with regard to food so that you can bring in the most nourishing foods for you. There's a Dr. Mark Hyman. I'm not sure if it's actually on um, his website or another website, but there's a list called the Dirty Dozen. You don't need to buy all organic produce. There's the Dirty Dozen, and I think it's the Clean 17, but if you Google that, you'll be able to find both of them. So it will give you the listing of foods that are the highest in pesticides, glyphosates, and other harmful chemicals, and the ones that are the least amount. So strawberries, for example, are one of the most highly pesticide-ridden fruits there are. So if you're going to buy strawberries, buy organic. Right, so that's how you can start to make some decisions about where do I wanna put my money with regard to the quality of the food that I can buy. And by making decisions like this, 
by gathering that information and then making your shopping list accordingly before you go to the stores to say, oh, am I supposed to buy organic squash and onions or not? Is this one of the foods that's on that list? You can actually start to make those questions. At the same time, take a look at where you're shopping in the grocery store. The real nutrient dense foods are on the perimeter. Vegetables, fruits, dairy products, meat products, fish products, eggs, certain cheeses, all those things are on the perimeter. The majority of stuff in the center of the grocery aisle is crap. And you know it's crap because it's shelf stable. Now that doesn't mean there aren't some canned goods that are maybe a really good thing for you to have in your pantry from time to time. Um, things that you can go back to when you need them. By and large, the most nutrient dense foods are the ones that are on the perimeter of the grocery store. And that's how you start to build a robust immune system by eating nutrient dense foods of the best quality that you can afford. Low toxin, anti-inflammatory, high nutrient foods. And I wanna throw in there, um, I don't like demonizing foods, but I think it's very, very important to point out that sugar is a drug. Sugar is a drug food. It's disguised in food. Sugar does nothing for your body at all. It is not an essential nutrient. It is not an essential requirement. There is no nutrient content in sugar, period. If you're going to eat fruit, the average person eats way too much fruit in general. You do not need fruit every single day. And you certainly don't need it at every meal. If you are going to eat fruit, my recommendation for you is to look at kind of parsing that out to a couple times a week and make sure that you're eating good quality fruit, something that you enjoy, not fruit juice. Juice is not fruit. Juice is the same as soda to the body from a position of what it does to your insides and your insulin response. It's not the same as eating an apple. Apple juice is not the same as eating an apple. Fruit itself comes with soluble and insoluble fiber. That's why we can eat a piece of fruit and it doesn't spike our insulin levels, any type of fruit, for example. So look at taking out things like sugar. Um, approach every single meal with a nutrition strategy. And what I mean by that is when you look at your plate or your lunch salad or whatever it is, the largest portion of what you're eating is vegetables. Colors of the rainbow, put everything on there that you can find, carrots and, red cabbage and dark leafy greens and mushrooms and all that kind of stuff. Make that a really, really nutrient dense, rich salad. And then you add in your fats and your proteins and things that build out your meal. So the most important part of every meal, the largest portion is going to be vegetables. The second size is going to be some form of protein. So what I like to use is my hand. And your hand is good at indicative of your body size for most people. So for protein, I look at this portion of my hand if I'm talking about fish, because fish you can eat a larger amount, so five to seven ounces. If I'm eating chicken, I'm looking at somewhere between three and five ounces. And if I'm eating red meat or pork, I'm looking at about the three ounce mark, right? So that's a really good way to kind of gauge what it is you're eating in size. And then the other essential piece to your meal is fat, some sort of high quality fat, avocados, nuts, um, olive oils, avocado oils. Um, every single meal, vegetables, protein, and some form of high quality fat is a way to round out your immune system. And I want to throw out there uh, junk oils. We've probably all heard about this for a long time. But in terms of your immune system remaining strong, understanding what sort of oils you buy and cook in that actually do damage to your intestinal lining is very important. So stay away from things that are vegetable oil, corn oil, sunflower, safflower, canola. 
Now there are some brands of organic canola. The problem is that by the time it gets to the store and it sits on the shelf, it's already rancid. And most of them are not in dark glass containers, which means that the oil's already bad. So again, when you're looking at oils, look at ghee, uh, grass-fed butter, um, buffalo butter is something that's actually available at stores and it's a phenomenal source because buffalo are still rumen animals that are treated as rumen animals. So it's a really, really great way to get high quality fats into your system. Um, let me throw out just a couple more things and then we'll get to some questions that I see are, are coming in. Um, your immune system is, is like everything else seasonal, right? So there are times of the year when we need to boost more of our immune system versus less. Colder weather, we tend to be in closed quarters and we're closer to people than we normally are for extended periods of time, which is one of the reasons and many viruses tend to do well in colder temperatures, which is why it's easier to pass things around. So building up your immune system, I've focused on building up my immune system in a different way as fall approaches than I do say in the summertime when we have plenty of time to get outside. What I'll do afterwards when we post this video is I'm happy to share some of the supplementation that I use from a seasonal standpoint, I'm not saying go out and buy all sorts of vitamins because that's generally not the thing. And vitamins are one of those things that you look at, again, getting, it's not getting everything, it's getting the best quality you can afford of very specific things that fill in holes or gaps in what you are and aren't doing. Some other health resources, if you wanna take a deeper dive, uh, Dr. Mark Hyman, he runs the Cleveland Clinic, which is the first functional medicine hospital in the United States, and it is a phenomenal, phenomenal place. Um, and he's a very well-respected doctor. If you'd like to learn more and take a deeper dive even into nutrition and resources. Dr. Peter Atia, A-T-T-I-A, Dr. Joseph Mercola, many of you have probably heard of him. He's been around for a long time and he's very much on the forefront of what's happening to um, diet, food supply, and how that's impacting our immune systems around the world. So those are just some of the um, resources I have for you today. Let me take a quick scroll down some of the questions that are here. Um, do melatonin tablets help maintain melatonin levels? Uh, no, melatonin tablets are a stopgap for when you're having difficulty sleeping, much like any other sleeping aid. So you, if you take melatonin, what typically happens is when you take it three to four hours later, you're awake again because it has a very short um, lifespan within your body. And it's just designed to try and get you to come down from not being able to get the melatonin release. So unless you have an actual melatonin disorder, start doing things in your home that reduce the amount of stimulative light, LED lights, you know, I know they're not the efficient ones anymore. A lot of us have gotten rid of the incandescent, but that's much better for us than LED lights are or wear your blue blockers. Um, somebody asked me about ATP cycle. So the ATP cycle is, it's the regenerative cycle your body goes through at a cellular level every single day that regenerates the cell health within your body. That's where sleep, and nutrition, none of these things work independently. They all work together. We are a system. So your ATP cycle is what happens as your cell bodies regenerate through the night, which are the powerhouses of your entire system, so that they can be more functional the next day. That's what ATP is. Um, question, what are your thoughts on consuming diet pop, asperitame, or regular pop, sugar once in a while? My suggestion is just eliminate it. And the reason is one of the challenges in teaching diet and health and nutrition is that there's an, there's an idea that, well, if I just have a little bit of this, it's not gonna hurt me. And 
what tends to happen is if you start to look at a cumulative effect. So let's say I'm only eating one bad thing at a meal once a day. And now I multiply that times seven days a week, 30, 31 days a month, however many weeks in a year, however many years I continue to do this. It's not that you have this immediate response like a broken arm, right? That's, a, that's an immediate thing I know that I need to get fixed. This is a slow, cumulative, methodical, consistent dampening of your immune system and because it happens so slow, we don't think it's really happening, but it is. So things that are, by and large, chemical-based are crap. Eat whole, real food. Get rid of the junk. Stop buying sodas for your grandkids. Do not buy Gatorade for your kids unless they're playing football and running track because you may as well be giving them soda and other junk. Stop buying them fruit juice, get them sparkling water, um, something that actually has more into it. Throw some strawberries in their water or some fresh lemon or lime is a better alternative than buying them any of that junk. Um, I have a Fitbit, they're offering extra services. If somebody wants to pay something monthly, is it worth it? If you're somebody who is using an exercise device, I've got a, I got a new one for Christmas. This little ring is called an Aura ring and it's a computer. It's a mini computer. Um, whether or not you're gonna use it is really up to you. Uh, I don't think I could say buy it and pay the extra services and you'll use it anymore. The average person who has a counter is still only moving about 3000 steps a day. So that's really gonna be you. Um, I want to let everybody know that I do have a free Facebook group, Eat, Evolve, Inspire. There's tons of nutrient-dense recipes, ideas, movement, strategies on sleep, mindfulness, um, all four pillars that I work with clients on and train on. Um, and I'd love for any of you to join it and ask more questions there. And I think that that's about... The only questions, oh, one more thing. Let me throw this out there. Protein is a goal, carbs are a limit, fat is a lever. Love that. That's actually a phenomenal thing. Let me throw this out there. There is no known disease that are, is a result of eliminating carbohydrates from your diet. None. We don't need carbohydrates. We don't need potatoes. We don't need chips. We don't need all that junk in our diet. Focus on whole foods, nutrient-dense, nutrient-rich foods. And that's all I got, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for having me here today. I'm going to turn this back over to um, President Linda. You can imagine that you got a good speaker gift. Um, I appreciate all the questions that people are asking. Uh, while Renee was talking, I flipped through the guests. I'm delighted to see that we have about 14 guests. One of them, Joe Hansen, visiting from uh, South Africa. Uh, the other one that I noticed was Linda Cohen, who spoke for us back in uh, August. Welcome to all of the guests and hope you will join us again next week. Uh, Bala, could you move the slide up for next week's program? Linda, if I may, from uh, Cape Town, South Africa. Yes. I just want to say uh, it's good to listen to you all, and I've got the waterfront banner for you all. Uh, the Rotary Club here at uh, Waterfront gladly accepted your banner, and I'm bringing one back for you. Excellent. We saw it on Facebook and we were very pleased with that. We put it on our Troy Rotary uh, Facebook page. Thank you very much. And of course, travel safe. I will. I, I hope the plane's there tonight. It, it's, the last <laughs> exactly. one, it's the last one out. Well, in the summer when we have all of these uh, mythical picnics that we're talking about, be sure and join us. <laughs> Okay, and uh, our next virtual meeting will be uh, April 1st, which is next uh, week. It will feature 
Dr. Bala Murtry, who is our president-elect and also district governor, uh, let me see, designee, which means at some time in the future, he will be our esteemed uh, district governor. He will be talking about happiness. What makes us happy? What do we want to do in our life? Please join us for that. Uh, the uh, link will be posted on troyrotary.net net right in the middle as well as by email so thank you for joining us today um bala is there anything you would like to add today about the virtual meeting it was a delightful thing to host this first ever virtual event for troy rotary hope you all found it as much interesting and enjoying as much as we did and uh, with Renee's presentation, we'll be posting the uh, into YouTube and posting the link on TroyRotary.net as well as on the Facebook and uh, also share some of the notes that uh, Renee will uh, send. Okay, I will send the note to our active members, honorary members, friends, and if you are not on one of those lists and you're listening, please send an email uh, to me at lrludy.att.net uh, so that we can get you onto one of our lists. Okay, are we ready for the four-way test? Okay, the four-way test. I can hear people echoing from all around the area and on the <laughs> other side of the world. Four-way test of things we say, think, and do first. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Third. Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Fifth. Is it lots and lots of fun? Don't fun. See you next week. Bye. 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 Thank you. Oh, the way that I wound up.